pleasant good afternoon. I'm uh, Ben Masalem. I'm one of the team of uh, chaplains serving here at uh, 4CMC with the uh, open table or liturgical service. I'm going to be giving the, uh, the message. So today is the seventh Sunday of uh, Easter, which marks the last Sunday of the season, paving our way to uh, the next season, which is the season of uh, Pentecost. So next Sunday will be a Pentecost Sunday. Uh, as you may know already, the season of Pentecost is the longest season in the liturgical calendar. Our text today is uh, taken from uh, the Acts of the Apostles, a reading from the book of Acts. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all of Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem, from the mount called Olives, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of God, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. As I was reading our scripture passages this past week, it dawned on me that our text today, this Sunday, are characterized by two different feelings. There's a feeling of loneliness and a feeling of excitement. There was a feeling of loneliness because the apostles were left on earth by Jesus when he was taken away up into the heavens. That was the ascension, the event of the ascension. In fact, in our calendar, the liturgical calendar, there is a feast day that's allotted for, actually it's gonna happen tomorrow. Tomorrow will be the feast day of uh, the Ascension. On the other hand, there's also a feeling of excitement, a feeling of fire, if you will. Jesus told his apostles before he was taken up to heaven, he promised them, but you will have power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, he said and you'll be my disciples, my witnesses, in Jerusalem, in all of Judea and Samaria, and even to the ends of the earth. This excitement propels us into the season of Pentecost that will begin next Sunday. But you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all of Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. That's verse 8 of the first chapter of Acts. In his commentary on the Acts of the Apostles, Joseph Fitzmaier says that this is the programmatic verse of Acts. It sets the scope of the spread of the Word of God, the goal that the commissioned apostles are to attain as they bring that Word 
from Jerusalem to the ends of the earth. And in fact, this verse might also be said to set the program for the life of Christians. The battle with them of all followers of the Lord, if you will. We who are followers of the risen Christ are also called to be witnesses wherever we go. Who says that the commission was just for the apostles? If that is the case, if that is so, the witnessing would have ended centuries ago. Do you think that Peter and John and James ever heard of the town or city we have gathered in today, like here in Tacoma or JBLM? Oh, but then perhaps it's the job of the bishops, the successors of the apostles, to be witnesses. Or perhaps the role of witness is meant only for the ordained clergy. Think again, my, my friends, my brothers and sisters in Christ. The commission is for all of us. You will be my witnesses. The commission is for all of us who are called to take part in the royal priesthood of all believers. Just as Jesus said, follow me, he also said, be my witnesses. So we should remember that. And what is a witness anyway? Webster's definition says, one who has seen or heard something and who can give evidence for its occurrence. And also, one who signs his name to a document for the purpose of attesting to its authenticity. It would seem that the testimony we must bear does not call for mere hearsay. But then, how are we living in the 21st century in a place that the apostles never heard of to be witnesses to something that happened 2,000 years ago? In a place most of us have never seen. Sure, we read the Bible, we know the story, but does that make us witnesses? Can we, as Webster says, give evidence of the occurrence of these things? I want us now to look more closely at what Jesus said. It's true that the apostles had been witnesses of all that Jesus said and did during his earthly ministry. But what Jesus says in today's reading is, you will be my witnesses. Our testimony is about him, not just about what happened long ago and far away. We are to give evidence about what we ourselves have heard, have seen, and experienced. We cannot be witnesses unless we have met the risen Christ unless our lives have been transformed by him. This is something that we as Christians probably do a lot more often than we know. St. Francis of Assisi said it well, proclaim the good news at all times. Proclaim the good news at all times. When necessary, use words. How many persons in your own lives have been witnesses, silent or otherwise, to you? On this uh, recent Mother's Day, we might have recalled our own mothers, grandmothers, and other material, maternal figures in our lives who have inspired and encouraged us, both by the word and by the example, in our lives in Christ. We are called to do the same. And this call is not issued just to teach us individually, but also corporately as members of the body of Christ. And more specifically, to us as members of this congregation here at JBLM. We should be seriously considering how we are called in this place and at this time to be his witnesses. The Lord calls us to be witnesses, and it's not something optional. But then we ask ourselves, what do we do? How can we get started as witnesses? It would appear from today's reading that two things are necessary. 
First of all, of course, we can do nothing through our own power. Jesus said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. As we await the glorious feast of Pentecost next Sunday, let us pray earnestly for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on all of us, both corporately and individually. It is only when we are clothed with power from above that we can do the work he calls us to do. The second thing that we must do is reflected toward the end of uh, the reading from the book of Acts. It says, all these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The communal prayer and harmony reflected in the stories from the book of uh, Acts of the Apostles should serve as a model for our own church community. Any disunity of the body of Christ in the body of Christ will always be an obstacle to the effectiveness of the witness that we bear. As the Lord Jesus prayed on the night before he died that we might all be one, so must we pray and act as one. In the baptismal covenant, which is usually renewed on Pentecost Sunday, we are asked, will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of the bread and in the prayers? And the people respond, we will. We must then be wholehearted in this commitment in order to be his witnesses. Please join me in prayer. May the love of our Lord Jesus draw us to himself. May his power strengthen us in his service. May his joy fill our souls. And may we be his witnesses wherever we go, even to the ends of the earth. Amen. Greetings again, my beloved, and on behalf of the Open Table community, I want to welcome you to Holy Eucharist. At Christ's invitation, we gather to taste and see that the Lord is good. Transformed by God's grace, all believers are welcome to share in this wonderful communion, for here we are united in one body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. With the joy of that holy mystery binding us together, let us come, share the sacrament, and celebrate the Holy Communion. The grace and mercy and peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us confess together. We confess that often we have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, anyone in Christ becomes a new person altogether. The past is finished and gone. Everything has become fresh and new. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give God our thanks and praise. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and good to give you thanks, Almighty God, for you are the source of light and life you made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ. In all times and places, your people proclaim your glory in unending praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We remember with joy the grace by which you created all things and made us in your own image. We rejoice that you called a people in covenant 
to be a light to the nations. Yet we rebelled against your will. In spite of the prophets and the pastors sent forth to us, we continued to break your covenant. In the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to save us, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of your favored one, Mary, sharing our life, he reconciled us to your love. At the Jordan, your Spirit descended upon him, anointing him to preach good news of your reign. He healed the sick and fed the hungry. Manifesting the power of your compassion, he sought out the lost and broke bread with sinners. Witnessing the fullness of your grace, we beheld his glory. On the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread, giving thanks to you. He broke the bread and offered it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat this bread. It is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Taking a cup again, he gave thanks to you, shared the cup with his disciples and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Drink from this, all of you. This is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. After the meal, our Lord was arrested, abandoned by his followers, and beaten. He stood trial and was put to death on a cross. Having emptied himself in the form of a servant and being obedient even to death, he was raised from the dead and exalted as Lord of heaven and earth. Through him you bestow the gift of your spirit, uniting your church, empowering its mission, and leading us into the new creation you have promised. Gracious God, we celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Grant that in praise and thanksgiving we may be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable in your sight, that our lives may proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Loving God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be for us the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ. Grant that we may be for all the world the body of Christ, redeemed through his blood, serving and reconciling all people unto you. Remember your church scattered upon the face of the earth. Gather it in unity as a, and preserve its truth. Remember the saints who have gone before us. In communion with them and with all creation, we worship and glorify you always. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all glory and honor is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. With boldness, let us pray together the prayer that Christ has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The table is spread before us. Let us join the celebration, the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This bread which we break, is it not a sharing in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. The wine which we drink, is it not a sharing of the blood of Christ? The cup which we bless is the communion of the blood of Christ. Let us pray. God, our help, we thank you for this supper. Share it in the spirit with your servant Jesus, who makes us new and strong who brings life eternal. We praise you for giving us all good gifts and pledge ourselves to serve you, even as in Christ you have served us. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you this day. The communion of the Holy Spirit bless you and keep you this day until we meet again. Amen. Go into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. 
help the suffering, honor everyone, love and serve God, rejoicing in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.